Hey everyone, this video is on the dispersion of light. Before we go through what dispersion is, it's important to define what white light is. White light consists of all wavelengths or colors of light. If we theoretically divide all the different colors that make up white light into its spectrum, this is what we will get. We'll see the different colors in what appears to be a rainbow-like spectrum. Each color corresponds to a specific frequency and wavelength. This is known as the visible light spectrum. In the visible light spectrum, on the side with a shorter wavelength or high frequency, we have a violet colored light. On the longer wavelength or smaller frequency side of the visible light spectrum, we have red colored light. Understanding this is important for dispersion because the refractive index of a medium depends on the exact frequency or wavelength of light that passes through the medium. This table does a very good job in summarizing the differences in the refractive index with the wavelength of light. For example, in water, red light has a refractive index of 1.331, but on the other side of the visible light spectrum, violet light, which has a shorter wavelength, has a slightly higher refractive index in the same medium that is water, which is 1.342. And this trend is seen in every other medium, diamond, glass, polystyrene or quartz. Shorter the wavelength of the visible light means the higher the refractive index for the given medium. And this has implications on how light refracts and is the underlying principle of how dispersion works. Now, why does the refractive index of the medium depend on the wavelength or the frequency? Recall that in the wave model, light is an electromagnetic wave, which consists of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. When light reaches the new medium, the electrons in that medium will oscillate in response to the light's electric field oscillation. When the frequency of the electric field oscillation of light is similar to the natural frequency of the electrons in the new medium, it causes a phenomenon called resonance. We discussed the cause of resonance in a separate video. When resonance occurs, it leads to a greater interaction between the visible light and the electrons in the new medium, and that causes light to slow down more. And this is the reason why media with a higher refractive index usually will lead to a slower speed of light and greater extent of refraction. So dispersion is the result of refraction when white light passes through a medium. Typically, this is glass. Here in the top right diagram, we have a beam of white light which consists of all the colors of different frequencies and wavelength. When this passes through from air into the glass prism, because white light consists of these different colors, each color will undergo refraction to a different extent. This allows the different colors to be separated into the spectrum. This separation of colors into a rainbow spectrum is known as dispersion. Now remember that each wavelength refracts to a different extent. Specifically, the shorter wavelength or higher frequency visible light will undergo a greater refraction. So the angle of refraction will be smaller. Longer the wavelength, such as red light, will undergo a smaller extent of refraction. In this diagram, we can see that both blue and red light undergoes refraction, but blue light is bent more towards the normal, resulting in a smaller refractive angle. Red light is also bent towards normal, but not as much as blue light. So the angle of refraction for red light is larger than the angle of refraction for blue light. Refraction not only changes the direction of travel, but also the actual speed or velocity of light. Although all components of white light will change in velocity as they undergo dispersion or refraction, the shorter wavelengths, such as a blue or violet color light, will travel slower because they are affected more by refraction compared to the visible light with longer wavelengths, such as the orange and red color lights. This means as white light undergoes dispersion in a glass prism, the different colored components of the light will be traveling at different velocities in the new medium. Snell's law in refraction also tells us that the wavelength changes during refraction. So in dispersion, the different colored components of the white light will also change in wavelength as they travel through the new medium. The wavelength will shorten if the new medium has a higher refractive index compared to the original medium. 
and this is usually the case when we are performing dispersion in a glass prism as light travels from air into a glass prism. Similarly, light of shorter wavelengths are again affected more than the ones with longer wavelengths. So the shorter wavelengths will become even shorter compared to the extent to which the longer wavelengths are affected by. Now, even though the actual wavelength of the visible light changes, their color remains unchanged because the frequency is actually what dictates the color that we perceive the light to be rather than the wavelength. So even though the wavelength changes, when the frequency remains constant, the color of each wavelength during dispersion still remains the same. Now, to summarize, dispersion is the phenomenon that occurs when white light undergoes refraction. It occurs because each colored component of white light has a different wavelength and frequency, and therefore they are affected by refraction to different extents. The shorter wavelengths of light, such as violet and blue, they are affected by refraction more, so they will be bent more towards normal and have a smaller angle of refraction compared to red and orange color lights, which have a longer wavelength. A beam of white light goes from air into flint glass at an incident angle of 43.2 degrees. The refractive index of flint glass for the red and violet light are 1.662 and 1.698 respectively. What is the angle between the red light and the violet light parts of the refracted light? So we want to look for the angle difference between the red and violet light as they undergo refraction. So to do this, we need to find the angle of refraction for the two lights separately. Snell's law gives us that n1 times by sine theta i equals to n2 times by sine theta r. We would need to use this equation for the two different colors of light. So let's do it for red light. So for red light, n1 is 1 because it's traveling in air. The refractive index in the second medium for the red light is 1.662 and we'll use this to find the angle of refraction, which is about 24.3 degrees. For the violet light, the refractive index in air is the same, which is 1, and the angle of incidence is the same because they were traveling together as white light. The refractive index in the second medium for violet light is slightly different due to its shorter wavelength, and this value is 1.698, and we'll times this by the refractive angle for violet light, and this is 23.8 degrees. So we will take these two angles and find the difference between them. So 24.3 minus 23.8, and this is about 0 0.55 degrees. What is the velocity of red light in the flint glass? So velocity in the new medium after refraction is equal to the speed in the original medium, that's called a C, divided by the refractive index of the new medium for that color light. So we're going to assume that the speed of light in air is close to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, and we'll divide it by the refractive index in the flint glass for the red light, which is 1.662. And this gives a value of about 1.81 times 10 to minus 8 meters per second. What about the wavelength of red light, which was 660 nanometers in air in a flint glass? So we know that lambda 1 divided by lambda 2 is equal to n2 divided by n1. Lambda 1 is 660 divided by lambda 2, which is what we're trying to find. And this is equal to the refractive index for red light in the new medium, 1.662 divided by 1. So lambda 2 equals 397 nanometers. Now, even though the red light has decreased in wavelength quite significantly, keep in mind that the color of the light is still red because the frequency remains constant during refraction slash dispersion. This concludes the video on dispersion of light. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.